The pandemic ended in-person visitation at jails across the nation. In Hamilton County, inmates were allowed to rent computer tablets where they could communicate with the outside world. But how the inmates use those tablets has been a source of controversy. I-Team reporter Paula Christian takes us inside the Hamilton County Jail. So what you have in the jail is a concentration of murderers, rapists, shooters, robbers, gang members, the kind of people who present an actual public safety risk if they're out of jail, but also their communications coming from the jail to the outside world. Amy Clossing is an assistant county prosecutor. Her office wants to hire four new paralegals next year just to monitor a backlog of inmate phone calls, electronic messages, and video visits. So the volume of communication has skyrocketed coming from the jail to the outside. She says the pandemic caused a near two year pause in jury trials, leaving the jail full of violent inmates who have plenty of time to talk or text on computer tablets. Clossing says prosecutors have gained valuable evidence for monitoring this communication, like crime confessions, weapon hiding spots, and evidence of witness intimidation. But now prosecutors say they need help with the backlog of jail communication as these cases move forward in court. We had a hundred and north of 150 murder defendants sitting in jail and certain inmates make hours of phone calls a day. But not any longer. Hamilton County Sheriff Charmaine McGuffey says she took away the tablets from male inmates all 900 of them more than a month ago after some repeatedly used them to burn and break jail windows. And finally, I just said, that's it. We're pulling them. They're done. McGuffey says former Sheriff Jim Neal signed the contract for these tablets in 2020. She introduced them to the jail last year to give inmates something to do during the pandemic. But she didn't expect the damage. The tablets, which are about double the size of this phone, are rented by the inmates. They crack the protective shell, remove the battery, and create a spark that can be used to break jail windows. Punching this window. The I-team first reported on the broken jail windows in March when 38 cells were out of service until the county could fix the windows months later. They're gone for my foreseeable future. I'm not putting up with this again. Thousands of dollars in windows and so forth, and that's county money. However, McGuffey is allowing most female inmates, roughly 100 of them, to keep the tablets because she says they didn't cause the damage with them like male inmates. It's hard already here and our, having our tablets, it doesn't make the time less harder. It just makes it to where it's enough to where you can uh, deal with the situation of being in here, but still make it. Audrey Shoemaker is in jail on drug related charges. She uses the tablets for video visits and homework with her two children. Lacey Kelly, who is in jail for a probation violation, uses the tablet to watch movies, read books, and talk to her family. The jail still does not allow in-person visitation due to COVID. Well, I feel like the tablets bring more calmness. McGuffey doesn't dispute what prosecutors say, that some inmates are on their tablet video phones for hours a day. But at 16 cents a minute for calls, she says not many can afford it. Uh, there's going to be a group of people that don't think that inmates should have tablets mm -hmm. because they think they should just be punished. I'm going to say to these people, look, do you want this person getting out of jail with some kind of measure of functionability, some kind of measure of recovery from being addicted so that they don't steal your computer out of your car again? I think you do. McGuffey says removing the tablets from male inmates should cut down on future communications. We'll know more about these four new paralegal positions when the county releases its budget next month.